Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yan, and I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match preview for Chelsea's Premier League game against Brighton at home at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea spirits may be high after an absolute battering of Grimsby Town 7-1 at home, Frank Lampard's first home win as Chelsea manager, but he still needs a home win in the Premier League and he will absolutely be looking to achieve that at home against Brighton this weekend. But Graham Potter's Brighton will be a very different task than Grimsby Town at home. He likes to try and play attacking possession based football and this will be a very different proposition for Frank Lampard and Chelsea than their midweek game. Before we do get into this match preview guys I want to remind you to ask you please do subscribe to this channel because I'm uploading daily content and I want you guys to keep up so please do subscribe hit the bell notifications icon and if you want to help me out please do like the video right a few talking points for this game two different teams two different approaches or maybe similar approaches We'll get into that, let's bring up the analysis screen. Right, so next to me on the graphic is Brighton's 3-4-3. They played last time out in the Premier League against Newcastle. Brighton have a load of decent players in there. All of their front three are really good, talented attacking forwards. They've obviously got proper in midfield and in the back line, they've got that man, Lewis Dunk. Now, I am a huge, huge fan of Lewis Dunk. I think he might be the most underrated centre-back in the Premier League. If you look at some of his statistical numbers that he churns out. He is an absolute beast. He should have been the number one target for Leicester when they sold Maguire to Man United. He would, I mean, they look like they're fine now, but he would have been an excellent candidate. And you know what? Arsenal should buy him. I hope they don't, but they should. He's that good. And Matty Ryan and Goal is a very, very capable goalkeeper as well. So they've got a good team. They employ this 3-4-3 system, which is defensively solid when needs to be, and also is good at combinational play and going forward. So like I said, Graham Potter is going to be one of these young English prodigy managers, but is forward thinking and plays attacking, free-flowing, possession-based football. He will try and do that at Stamford Bridge, but he won't be that naive, no. He'll be able to sit in with whatever that free, you know, a back five I guess when they're out of possession but when they have the ball and when they're looking to break and combine they'll certainly be very very dangerous or at least they could be in theory. So I do assume Graham Potter will set up the 3-4-3 again like he did last time out in the Premier League but how will Chelsea line up? Right so as you can see I've switched the graphic to two possible formations and lineups. Now it's a really difficult one to speculate especially because Frank Lampard changes formation so much but because the opposition is likely to play a 3-4-3. You'd think Frank Lampard would re-employ his own 3-4-3 like he did against Wolves, which was so, so successful. So that's your initial thought. Like, okay, that works against the free back system really well before, he'll try it again. And again, he'll be desperate to get that home win, so maybe he thinks that's the way to go. But I think that's not necessarily the way to go. I think it cost him in the Valencia game playing a free back system because he was so desperate to be defensively solid and secure that home win. And we know that the 3 4 3 or the free back system is not Frank Lampard's preferred system. His preferred system that he wants to play is the formation he played against Grimsby, the 4 2 3 1. That's what he was doing in pre season, that's what he's trying to hammer into the players' heads. But he basically saw there was issues, so for adaptability, he went to the 4 3 3. He actually went to Sari's 4 3 3 because the players know it really well and it was a little bit more defensively solid and left less space between the lines. So them two being his most preferred formations, I think he might try and go with a 4-3-3, one that does change to a 4-2-3-1 mid-game and different phases of play. And because of that, even though the opposition does play a three-back system and he may well just go 3-4-3 to counter it, I feel like for him this would be a perfect opportunity against lower league opposition because let's have it right, it's still Brighton at home he'll probably take this as an opportunity as a learning curve to again hammer home his preferred formation into his players in a competitive match. So yeah, really I could probably see a 4-3-3 but to be honest it could easily be a 3-4-3 as well. And in terms of personnel you can expect heavy rotation from the midweek game against Grimsby Obviously there were some really bright sparks in that midweek game, loads of kids really proved themselves but the Premier League team will be rotated back in in terms of fatigue so expect players like Tamori, Mason Mount, 
Abraham to all come back in, people like Azpilicueta too, and of course Jorginho and N'Golo Kante etc etc. There are huge positives of all these players playing well in the cup in midweek and although they'll probably be be too fatigued to play in this game, I would not be at all surprised to see someone like Callum Hudson-Odoi on the bench, and even though he played 90 minutes on the Wednesday, if Chelsea are doing well against Brighton at home and it's the last 20 minutes, Frank might be inclined to bring Callum on to just blood him for his first Premier League minutes of the season, see if he can get a goal or an assist or something like that if the game is safe but probably not any earlier to risk a, a highly fatigued player in an important game. Like if he genuinely needs a goal, maybe not bring him on, I don't know. But if he plays some minutes at the end, I think out of all the players that played, it could probably be him. So for me, it could be either one of those systems and just basically expect heavy rotation for the main Premier League players squad to come back in. Even though eventually that main Premier League squad might look very different by the end of the season and we may see a couple of inclusions like Reese James and maybe some others in the final Premier League team in the final weeks. Alright, I want to talk a little bit more about how this game could go, so let's get rid of the analysis screen. Right, so if Frank Lampard does decide to go with the 3-4-3 against Brighton, which is highly likely, remember, he needs to be careful about playing in between the lines, or perhaps how the players might not play between the lines. What I'm trying to say is, he did this against Valencia, and there was loads of sort of sterile wing-back player, wing-backs with possession, throwing in crosses, but not playing Giroud to get on the end of them, and it was a lot of like, dormant play, nothing was really happening. Even if the stats were on their side, it looked really unthreatening. So if he's gonna play that system, they need to find a way to play between the lines better and combine and therefore be more threatening in the final third because the attacking passages of play against Valencia, I went to that game and never really felt like something was gonna happen. But if they can find the same form as they did against the back three and the game against Wolves, then that should not be a problem and hopefully they could generate a lot of chances and score goals. Speaking of between the lines, if Chelsea employ the fallback system of 4 3 3 or 4 2 3 1 against Brighton, they need to not leave space between their own defensive and midfield line. Obviously, that was a huge problem at the beginning of this season, and admittedly, it has got better, especially since Frank went to the more Maurizio Sarri Chelsea formation because they seem to move around better as a block the team purely because they've been drilled like that under Sarri for a year. So that should be less of a problem, but still, it's easy to get complacent after a 7-1 victory against Grinsbury Town, and Brighton will be looking to do something here if they can. The pressure's off them, so Chelsea have to be careful and not get nervous as they're still looking for the Premier League, well, their first Premier League home win. And of course, the biggest concern, regardless of formation, regardless of opposition, regardless of the approach, is defending set pieces. A long-standing problem with Frank Lampard that he brought with him from Derby, and indeed probably a long-standing problem with Chelsea over the last couple of years. Frank makes his players do zonal marking. Now that splits opinion zonal marking. A lot of people think it's necessary for modern football. A lot of people think that you have to go man to man. or A lot of people think as well that Chelsea don't have the personnel to go man to man. So therefore zonal makes a lot more sense. As in Chelsea are a short team. Doesn't matter though because they need to sort it out whichever way they do it. Chelsea are giving away so many cheap goals you know, goals that they basically, it's basic stuff, do you know what I mean? Stuff that Grimsby probably would defend it better. Actually, maybe not, but you know what I mean. So, huge Achilles heel for Chelsea, but if they can do that, if they, you know, they don't have big man Lewis Dunk getting on the end of corners and giving me nightmares, then Chelsea should be all right, and regardless to the formation they use, whether a three-back or a four-back system, they should be able to create enough to dispatch Brighton at home and secure all three points and then start what hopefully would be a positive run in the Premier League because the next few fixtures are very winnable for the Blues. For this video, I'm gonna give a score prediction. Um, I still, Chelsea are without a clean sheet still and Frank and the boys will be desperate for it. I wanna be positive. Usually I'm a little bit too, pes not pessimistic, but realistic or my objectivity makes me pessimistic. So I'm gonna be really positive in this game and I'm going to say Chelsea, I'm going to beat Brighton at home 3-0. How about that? Oh God, please win 3-0. Anyway, hopefully Chelsea will be massive favourites so they can get three points, right? Anyway guys, what do you think? This is why I throw it back to you guys so you can get down 
into the comments and let me know your thoughts and opinions on this game, the current Chelsea squad, the personnel that should be playing in this fixture and the coach and moving forward. Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Remember, if you want to support me, you can like this video if you have enjoyed the content and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. And why not subscribe to my new sister channel, Yan Plays, where I play FIFA and it's hilarious. You should check it out. Follow me on social media at FootballYannick on Instagram and Twitter. And other than that, guys, I think I'm done. So you enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.